This game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Well, okay then. Um, individuals suffering from anxiety or depression may not have a safe experience playing this game. For content warnings, please goes to this site. Oh my god, what a star that got me into. By playing Doki Doki Literature Club, you agree that you are at least 13 years of age and you consent to your exposure of highly disturbing content. Okay. Yes. One. Hello everyone and welcome to something which Starlight has forced me into doing. This is Doki Doki Literature Club. Now, I haven't looked at anything on this. I don't know anything about this. It's Starlight's way of punishing me because, well, it's Starlight. Mind you, he does think that Russia is part of Europe, so I'll give him a slight break. So without further ado, let's dive right in. It's got a huge amount of things. Oh no, please tell me I can't choose my own name. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, why am I having too much fun with the name? Uh, oh god, why am I having too much fun with the name? I'm going to go with a two-part name. I'm going to be called... <laughs> Mr. Royd. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'll go with Royd because my first name's Emma. <laughs> okay. Hey! Who the hell is this? I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbour and good friend since we were children. You know the kind of friend you've never seen yourself making today, but it's just the kind that works out because you've known each other for so long? Yeah, I know that. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. Well, that that's just sounds like more like a you problem. Go and wake her up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. Wow, okay. However, I just sight and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori cap up to me. Hopefully a bus will hit me! I overslept again, but I caught you this time. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Yeah, because I'm Mr. Ride. Uh, you say like that you're thinking about ignoring me. Oh, look at her. She's so cute. That's mean, Royd. If people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think that we're a couple or something. Yeah, because I'm a man and I'm not in touch with my feelings. God, what is this, 1992? Fine, fine. But you did wait for me, after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean, even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. Hehe. <laughs> we cross the streets together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. Okay. Speak of which, how old are people in this fucking game? By the way, Royd, have you decided to join a club yet? Yeah, javelin, you get to throw pointy sticks at people. A club? I told you already I'm not really interested in joining other clubs. Yeah, because I'm alone and low off. I haven't been looking either. Eh. That's not true. You told me you were doing a club this year. Did I? I'm sure if it's possible, then I did. In one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along and with whatever she's talking or going on about. Sierra likes to worry a little too much about me. When I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Well, just like any other stereotypical person, okay? 
Uh huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialise or have any skills before college. Well, that's just rude. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. Oh, isn't she cute? And I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. What the fuck is a neat? Okay, flash up on the screen now the definition of a yeet. Neat. I nearly said yeet. Oh my fucking god, I'm too tired already. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. Oh, she's so cute. Alright, alright. I'll look into a few gloves if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? I don't know. She looks really <laughs> complex, if you will. More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. Oh, she's so cute, why not? I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little. Even if she does exaggerate everything inside her head. Look, there's nothing wrong with exaggerating. Most of the world gets their own lies. The school day is as ordinary as ever, but it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Well, yeah, that's school for you. Clubs. So he wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Oh, no. Hello? Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom whilst I was spacing out. I looked around and realised that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. Hee! <laughs> oh, she's so cute. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know. Know what? Well, that you could come to my club. Sayori! Yay! Uh, yeah, that's, there is no way I'm going to your club. Uh, meanie. How am I a meanie? Sayori is the vice president of the literature club. Ah, ah, it said it! Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she'd only do it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. That is not matching me because fun fact, I've already got two books and I nearly failed English at college. Yay! <laughs> yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday that I would bring a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. That is a good life lesson. Do not make anything you can't keep. Nearly ones you can keep, yes. But ones you can't, no. Because it just gets you into piles and piles of shit. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she's so cunning as to have planned this all out. I think she planned it because can't you tell she's crushing on me already. I let out a long sigh. <sighs> Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go! She's so cute. And thus today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I've heard people sell their soul for a lot less, so at least you get a cupcake. At least you can have something de delicious to eat while you go down to hell. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school 
and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. <laughs> Ugh, excuse me, I think I'm getting a bit of corona. Ugh! Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door like a mad case. Everyone, this... the new member is here. I told you, don't call me a new member. Uh, I glance around the room. Girl 1, welcome to the literature club. It is a pleasure to meet you. Um, all I can say is very pointy. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what, how much I could get away with it. <laughs> Sayori is always saying nice things about you. Seriously? You bought a boy? Oh god. That had to be an angry short one, didn't they? There's all... There, it can't be any more stereotypical. Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, Royd! What a nice surprise! Well, if you get a hemorrhoid, it is a fucking surprise. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Hey, I never said I'd join. All words escape me in this situation. This club. It's full of incredibly cute girls. I know. Hair that can strangle you. A little girl that will probably stab you. And one with huge boobs. So, uh... Yeah, I can't. I don't know what I can get away with. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. S sorry. Natsuki. Hmm. Okay, so you're called Natsuki, okay? The girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is the one I don't recognise. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's also the one who made cupcakes according to Sayori. Also, you're the baking nut. Alright, oh, okay. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back towards the other girls. Oh, so she'll probably slap you. Anyway, this is Nesuki. Always full of energy. Monster energy. Please sponsor me. <laughs> And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Okay, so there's Yuri. D don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears more comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Nasuki. Okay, I instantly relate to her most. Ah, well, it's nice to meet the both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica. Is that right? Who the fuck is Monica? Oh, oh wait, so okay. Shrangy all with hair. Okay. That's right. It's great to see you again, Royd. <laughs> Monica smiles sweetly. And also, your skirt is way, way getting up there. Also, where the fuck is the breeze coming from for that to happen? We do know each other. Well, we rarely talk. But we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic, very bendy. <laughs> God, I'm having too much fun with this. Basically, completely out of my league. I don't know, I am a solid potato. You know, people love potatoes. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... You, you too, Monica. Come sit down, Royd. We made room for you at the table, so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Oh. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? Oh, this all so sweet. My house school wasn't like this, it was wall-to-wall -wall violence and sick and stress. The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As I already mentioned, it's been widened so that there is one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. 
Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room, where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Woo! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cat's ears. Aww. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make the ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. Eh, uh -huh. well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Tori grabs the first one, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious! Sayori talks with her mouth full, and I was already, ma already managed to get icing on her face. Apologies for the stutter. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking at the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavour. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Nasuki. What? Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything? Yeah. I thought you technically did. Sayori said... Well, maybe... But not for you. Y you know, you dummy. All right, all right. I give up on Nasuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yori returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places the teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers give us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Well, it depends. If you spill that hot cup of tea somewhere sensitive, then you're not going to be enjoying that book for much longer. <laughs> ah, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. You're always just trying to impress you. Oh, oh, yeah, I can tell. Look, she's blushing. Look at her, she's blushing. Eh, uh, th that's not... Insulted, Yori looks away. Oh, I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but at least enjoying tea. I'm glad. Oh, Yori faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, what makes you consider the Literature Club? Um, I was afraid of this question. <laughs> Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori, kicking and screaming for a cupcake. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay. Don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it is my duty to make the club feel fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the de of the debate club last year? <laughs> well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica is a really great leader. Oh, Sayori should be leader. She's adorable. Yuri also nods in agreement. 
then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard and convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident we can all really grow from this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah? We'll do our best. You know it! Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Yeah, it's not creepy at all. Also, I'm still confused because this game is labelled under horror. So, w soon things are just going to go wrong. And I'm, I know I'm going to shit my pants, but it's just going to go terribly wrong. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they're also delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Roy, what kinds of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Does a shampoo bottle count? Manga? I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Nasuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. N not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Are you sure it's the smile? Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favourites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story is such a foreign world, especially and Im equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. Nothing wrong with that. Do what makes you happy. Unless it's murder, then... Actually, no. If you do the right people. Yeah. You know, like... Uh, I'm not even going to go into the gist of that. Watch The Purge, you'll get the idea. But, you know, I like a lot of little things stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Oh god, here we go. Ah! I read a horror book once. I desperately grasp at something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think, or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh. I hate horror. Oh? Why is that? Well, I just... Nasuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right. You usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Nasuki? What? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind in the last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called DON'T SAY IT OUT LOUD! And give that back! Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are. Sayori sidles up behind Nasuki and puts her hand on her shoulders. Oh, she's so cute. I'm not cute! Nasuki, you write your own poems? Uh, 
Well, I guess. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. No. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, not a very confident ride to you. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Nasuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Uh, I guess it's the same for Yuri. Oh, I wanted to read everyone's poem. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea for everyone. Huh? Nasuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then, next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um. Yeah, let's do it! Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. You must form the club, it's not a cult. Actually, this could be a fucking cult. Oh, God. Isn't that right, Royd? <laughs> Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on. There's still one problem. Eh? What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sayori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made my decision. I still have all the clubs to look at and um, I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. Oh shit, they all want to kill me. But... I'm sorry, I don't... Hmm... Royd... Y you all... I'm defenceless against these girls. I know! Look at them! They're all so cute! And also, some padding here and especially here. You know, padding! How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls... Oh, God. God, the writing I do makes the Catholic Church hate me. <laughs> right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the Literature Club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Holy shit, they all raised it once. Yes, I'm so happy. Sorry, wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey, hey. You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone, remember tonight's assignment? Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so that we can all share. Monica, Monica looks over at me once more. Royd, I look forward to seeing you on how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up in me. God, I know. Hemorrhoids do that to you. <laughs> Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Asuki clean up their food. Hey, Royd! Since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right. Sayori and I would never walk home together anymore because she's always stayed after school for the clubs. Sure. Might as well. 
Yay! With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my man wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Nasuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances. And I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Okay, it's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favourite club member will like. Something good might happen. And who, whoever likes your poem the most. Okay. Uh, graveyard. Um. Um. Massacre. Um. Passion. Um. Love. <laughs> um. Explode. Uh. Music. Poof. <laughs> uh. Uh. Ambient. Lust. Horror Chocolate Sticky Existence Grief Rose Romance Oh shit Death Climax. Hey, there it is. Doki Doki. Um, pleasure. Hi again, Royd. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Haha. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last one to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for helping keep your promise, Royd. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. <laughs> Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Ah, oh, come on, like he deserves any slack. Sarah told me you didn't even want to join the any clubs this year. And last year too! I don't know if you plan just to come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Oh, shit! Okay, so she's already threatened to murder me. Now, Suki, you certainly do have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Um, um, um. Oh, someone's got a little red face. Now, Suki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. MANGA IS LITERATURE! Swiftly defeated, Nasuki plops back in her seat. Doink. Don't worry guys! Royd always gives his best, as long as he's having fun! He helps me with busy work without even asking! Like cooking, cleaning my room... How dependable! Sayori, that's because your room is so messy, it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. <laughs> is that so? <laughs> you two really are good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. Oh god, there's, there's another one who's willing to stab me. I've got two women to stab me now. How come? You and Roy can be from good friends too. Um, um, Sayori. Hmm? 
As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh. Yuri, e Yuri even brought you something today, you know. Wait, wait, Sayori! Hey, eh? Me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Ne never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what I do, I do. Eh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. It, is that so? Yeah, I don't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright, well, here. Yori reaches into a bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so I should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, oh, I, I know, you know, curtains drawn, lights dimmed. Bed springs being tortured. Uh -huh. Discuss it if you wanted. That this is. How has this girl accidentally been so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't mean seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Nasuki is rummaging around in the closet. Man. It looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slump down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me. But I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably going to seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though, but... Hmm... Well, you can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what the Literature Club is about. The problem is that the idea of the Literature Club seems too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Eh? What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, no one will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sorry? taking this really seriously it's rare to hear a deliberating like this hmm that's a good point in that case do you think food will do the trick what 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 kind ah well I guess we could cupcakes aha uh -huh. good thinking Nasuki would love to do that ah you're right Nasuki makes the best cupcakes that works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. <laughs> Cupcakes then it is. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. 
I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Oh, shit! Oh! I open my eyes to find Sarah's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. Hehe, <laughs> sorry! Wait, actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Yeah, I'm editing these fucking videos. Now that you're in a club, you're going to have less time for anime, you know. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. Hee <laughs> hee. It's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh, uh, not, not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. I knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Eh? Sayori glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look at your hair. It's sticking out all around here. Ah! I run my fingertip down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look at your bow. It isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right there. I tried to wipe off the stain with my finger. But but nobody would ever notice that. Of course they wouldn't. Nobody's going to tell you it because they didn't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Wow, I'm a dick. Yeah. Hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you even think about... Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend? Wow, I'm a real dick in this game. Eh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer up from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Oh, I'm getting handsy. <laughs> This is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Eh? D don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it. Stupid. It's okay though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Uh, I, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. No wonder I think it's called padding or development. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. Uh, if you ever buttoned it, would you have noticed it sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore? What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. <laughs> oh my god, there we go. D don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway, you look so much better now. Ah, why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy. Uh, it's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew! That's so much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying like that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. 
Oh, she's so cute. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all of these embarrassing things. Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal! Hee <laughs> hee. Oh, fuck, I fucked up that voice. I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we actually are taking care of ourselves. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, huh? So, maybe you should come wake me up in the morning? You're doing it again, Sayori. Oh, but I was joking that time. <laughs> Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Eh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Royd, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I failed to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Y yeah, my relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Zoe and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Zoe's is on a wrinkled sheet of loosened leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from here. Nasuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I share my poem with first? Ah, oh, fuck. Ah, oh, God. There's so many choices! Um, well, I guess it'd be rude to not do Sayori first. I'm definitely most comfortable sharing with Sayori first. She's my good friend after all. Oh my goodness! This is so good, Royd! Eh? I love it! I had no idea you were such a good writer! Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Asuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh. Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know. So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a right poem! And that's what makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. Oh, she's really so cute. You're so weird, Sayori. Eh? I'm really happy just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you really are a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Uh, well, of course. I'm not really into that yet, but that does mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Royd. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people, that's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori! I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Yeah, because I just want them. <laughs> oh, God. I'm a real pervert in this game. Then again, I can't decide that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That will be my way of thanking you. All right. I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay! Now, you'll read my poem too, right? 
Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Ah, oh. Dear Sunshine, The way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. Ah. Now, looking into this, I think she's really talking about myself here because I wake her up and do stuff like that, but something worries me here. That bit right there, that I could sleep forever. That sounds a bit like depression creeping in. Sayori, this is just a guess, but did you wait until this morning to write this? No? J just a little bit? You can't answer just a little bit It's to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least it makes me feel better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Ah, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It just came out nice. Or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially the last line. I made eggs and toast! Even though you were late to school? It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. Hee <laughs> hee! That was so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm going to write the best poem ever! Well, I guess I look forward to reading it. Who should I show my poem to next? Uh, let's go for the least craziest one out of the three. Yuri. Um, Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes more than enough time for a finished reading. Um, oh, so, sorry, I, I forgot to start speaking. Um, it's fine, don't force yourself. I, I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on, okay? This is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Uh, so it's that bad? No! D did I just raise my voice? Uh, I I'm so sorry. Um, Yori buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yori a while to get used to new people. It's fine. I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Right. Um... It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most notable thing I recognise in new writers is that they try to make themselves very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick up a writing style separate from a topic matter and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and expressiveness are weakened. Once Yori finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanour totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There's so many different skills and techniques that get into writing, even though it's a simple poem. Not just that, but finding and building them, it gets them getting to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might make, take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Nasuki can be a little biased, though. Biased? How? Uh, um. Well. Never mind. I I shall 
be talking about people like this. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Nasuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please, do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yori smiles dreamily, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. <laughs> After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost Under the Light The tendrils of my hair illuminate breath, the amber glow, bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air of the purest but living in the past. The light flickers, I flicken back. It sounds like Yuri is afraid of change. Uh, I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read it. Ah! Well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm, I'm really glad you liked it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a, a ghost at all, right? Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember, that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story, or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps, the case of a subject of a poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past. Hey, I said that! Afraid of change! And soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep writing. Sorry, trying. Was it right or trying? Anyway, I'm counting on you. Who should I show my phone to next? Uh, let's do a quick save. Uh, let's do the crazy little girl. Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. I just didn't. It, it just didn't evoke any emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for your tastes. Do you want to get smacked? I, I'll pass. <sighs> well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Why did it just change to, like, private school music? Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race, owls can see, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. Okay. Yeah. I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. Did I? What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because, everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing 
style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly! I like it when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem, seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set it up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling of the last line. So you did. I guess more went into that than I realised. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that for the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. I decided to humour her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Nosuki's feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Hmm, I wonder who I'm gonna choose next. Will it be option A, Monica, B, Monica, C, Monica, or D, Monica? Can I, can I hide in the closet? She scares me. Please let me go in the closet! No. Hi, Reed. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright. I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better the going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I'll have to. <laughs> oh, oh, there's the there's the Monroe pose. Don't worry, Roy. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. But that's sort of the barrier that we'll learn to get past soon. Wait, you're telling me this first time they've ever done it? Why the fuck did they chose to do that without me? Oh god. Yeah, that's true. I have Monica in my poem. Hmm. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. Ah, well. We may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm? Well, that may be the case, but maybe there's also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks to you about you, it sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? <laughs> I, I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Sayori's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can really tell that she likes exploring with emotions and happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Oh god, there's the depression! Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little either. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little biased towards their own kinds of styles, but I'm always happy to find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> ah. Ha. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims they're not very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole oh shit, this is a scroller. Hole in the wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the sparkle protrudes. A noisy neighbour, an angry boyfriend, 
I'll never know. It wasn't home. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No! I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retains. Already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep, stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realise now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. Okay. So what do you think? Hmm. It's very freeform. If that's what you like to call it. Sorry, I'm not really in the right person to ask for feedback. Aha, okay. Yeah, that's the kind of style we've got proper to nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put this. I guess you could say I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. It's kind of nervous to talk about stuff like that because it's coming on strongly. Well, we just... There we go. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. Anyway, another way to think about this is, if you keep your pen in the same spot, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Whew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. The, that was a little more stressful than I anticipated. As if everyone was judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand there. Up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. I'm gonna save it here. And I'm gonna win this episode here. I have no idea what's coming because this is really trippy. It's really, really trippy. But anyway though, I have been your host, Mr. Gage. And if you like this video, go and give it a big fat thumbs up and subscribe if you're new because well I'm trying new things do new things and I'm enjoying it so just come along with the journey with me share and don't forget doing a tiny tiny giveaway at 100 subs just to say thank you for actually believing in my crazy ass self but until then be good to yourself be good to each other and I'll see you in the next episode, whatever that may well be. Probably this, but who knows. Bye-bye.